In this video, you guys are gonna learn how to stop feeling like you're rushing the downswing. If you guys like the video, please hit that like button. And if you are visiting my channel for the first time, please subscribe because it really helps me to create more videos like this for you guys. Now let's get started. So whenever someone comes in and explains to me that they feel like they're rushing the downswing or they feel like their arms are kind of stuck behind them, the, in most cases it has to do with what you're doing in the backswing. When the player comes in, what I see all the time with a player with this issue is that they take it back very, very short. So when I'm explaining this, I want you to focus on, again, the position of my lead shoulder, okay, when I'm doing the, the demonstration in the backswing. So a player that has a very short backswing would tend to look like this. So they turn their hip, okay, but you can see that my lead shoulder doesn't really move much, okay? And, and typically when a, a person makes a full backswing, that shoulder is gonna get somewhat to the right of the ball or that, that shoulder is gonna reach pretty much the chin um, in the backswing there. But with these players, they kind of look like this. So they basically are just kind of pulling their arm across and they're trying to raise their arm this way without really turning their chest very much, okay? so. If you take it back like that, and that, le that lead shoulder doesn't get enough to the right of the ball, then when you start your downswing, your, your lower body, everything else outraces, and then your, your club kind of feels like it gets stuck behind your body because your, your body is kind of outpacing your, your arms and hands and club kind of in the opposite direction. So that's why you feel like you don't have very much time and you feel like everything's cramped and you have to quickly try to get the club to get back to impact. What you guys have to feel like is if you are this player that kind of takes it back like this, is that you have to add two movements. You have to add rotation and extension to the backswing. So if you can see this backswing here versus one with more rotation and extension, okay, you can see that my hands travel much further into the backswing and that gives my body enough time to sequence everything else and allows my arms a, bit, a lot more time to kind of get back to the ball. So it's, it's basically with anything, if it's really short and then everything else is really quick, then you'll feel like it's really hard and you don't have much time to get back to the ball. But if you can lengthen the backswing and get your arms and shoulders and chest to kind of move back, back further, then everything kind of smoothens out. You just have a lot more time to get your arms to get, get back in front of you and, and, and not get stuck behind your body as much. Again, if you are that player that has a very short backswing and doesn't get that lead shoulder to kind of get, get to the right of the ball enough, what I also see is that when they do that, they have their right arm almost attached to their rib cage. And you actually don't want to literally do that. I, I know a lot of people like put something under their right arm, but you don't want the tricep to actually be attached to the rib cage because that'll really limit the height of your hands and the size of your backswing overall. So these players kind of tend to look like this. You can see how, how low my right arm is, okay? It's actually very normal for that right arm to kind of get up in the air to where the tricep is at least, you know, close to parallel with the ground. There has to be some amount of gap there, and that's important for power and everything as well. But if you can add that rotation in and extend the chest, not keep it flexed forward like I am, that'll make it feel or encourage you to get your hands and your arms to raise up a little bit higher to where there's a bit more space, the triceps a bit closer to parallel. You obviously don't want to raise it up here where your armpits are totally exposed, okay? But at least parallel to the ground is kind of what you, um, you should be okay with in the right arm. So when you do that, again, you'll feel a lot more length, you'll feel a lot more height kind of up and around your body Okay, and again, that'll give you a lot more time and a lot more space, right, to get your arms and everything back in front of you so you don't feel, you don't feel stuck back here, okay? That's the other thing too is if it's attached when you come in, that right arm is, if, it, if you attach it, it kind of gets stuck behind the body and then also you can't get your arm to get, get past you. You'll have to like flip your wrist or, or do something, right, in, in order to compensate for that. Just remember, it's totally fine when you add extension, to feel like your arms raise up and around, okay? Just to see that space there. Even if you have a short backswing, you know, there's a lot of good players that have short backswings, but it's still in, in sequence, okay? So 
what that means is like even if they take it back really short, they're not like getting their bodies to really outrace their arms, okay? They're getting their arms to come back um, in, in time. They're not having this massive separation between lower and upper body like this, okay? Otherwise, they're going to feel like it's rushed. If you are comfortable with a shorter backswing, your arms only maybe go, up, go back to here, I think you can, you can still kind of get more chest rotation. You can see how I'm getting my chest to really rotate, but my, my arms don't really raise up very high. Kind of stops here. If you can get your body, at least, to kind of turn enough with your arms staying, staying at this length, then the fact that your body has moved more will, will give your, your arms a little bit more time to kind of, get, again, get back in front of you. But you need to feel like you're, you're not really rushing the rotation relative to your arms, okay? So you have to slow down the rate at which you're turning your, your lower body. So that should actually give your, again, allow your arms to get back in front of you so that you don't get this stuck feeling like this. Okay, so on the screen, I'll, I'll kind of show the swing with a very short backswing in comparison to uh, a swing that has more rotation and more extension. Now, I want you to pay attention to the pace of it. Okay, so the time it takes for the club to get back to impact. And you'll notice that when I have a short backswing, the time it takes for the club to get back to the ball is much faster, okay? And when I have more rotation and extension in the backswing, you'll see that the time it takes is much longer. Everything looks, looks a lot smoother. I hope that gives you a better visual of what adding those two movements can, can allow you to do, okay? So that you don't feel so rushed. And usually you wanna feel that extra length and because of this reason or because of this visual that I'm showing you guys. Okay, so for this first drill, um, this is, all you'll need is like an alignment stick or, or two golf gloves. And this one I'm just gonna place right across the top of my shoulders. And the one that's on the ground, it's not perfectly straight in line with the ball. I've actually angled it um, towards my trail foot, maybe, you know, like 10, 20 degrees, something like that. So the purpose of this on the ground is when you make a turn, I want you to be able to get the lines or the alignment sticks parallel to each other, right? And this is this is obviously gonna be, or force you to go more than 90 degrees of rotation. It's just a way to give you a feel of adding a lot more rotation than you're, you're probably used to, okay? But if you can get this end, the lead side end, kind of to the right of the ball, then you should be kind of close to, to being parallel with the line that's, uh, or the stick that's on the ground. So the other part too is that you don't want to like get this to the right and, and have it more over your right foot. That would mean that your, your upper body is, is staying more flexed forward, okay? So what you wanna do is you wanna match the lines on the ground, but you also want it to be pretty much like on top of each other at the same time. So that'll encourage more rotation and more extension. So that's a really good drill to kind of get you to feel those two things at the same time. So if you're, if you're taking it back, this is probably what you were doing before, is your shoulder would only get to here, okay? And then you would kind of just pull your arm across you like this. This is what uh, the majority of you guys are probably doing, okay? So if you can get this to like get past the ball, this end to get past the ball, kind of parallel to the one that's on the ground, you can see how much more my arm is able to travel around me and like up and around me like this way, okay? You'll have a good point of view reference looking at it down um, from your own point of view. And once you get a good feel of that, like I was doing before, you can just place your left arm straight like this. You can turn and you can kind of feel your arm kind of moving up and around you at the same time. And that should allow you to feel a lot more length kind of in the back swing. Okay, so the second drill, um, you're gonna need a wall, all right? And to know how far you're, you're away you're standing, you're gonna have the wall on your trail side, but I'm just gonna place my lead arm, like right, my palm right on, the, right on the wall like this. And to know if you're set up correctly with the wall is like your, your arm is parallel to the ground, okay? And your arm is like straight into the wall. So you don't want to place your arm out here. You don't want it across your chest. You want it like directly into the wall, pretty much parallel to the ground, okay? That's, just, that's how you know you're standing far enough away from the wall for this drill, okay? So once you're set there, you're just gonna do this with your lead arm. And it's a kind of a variation of a punch drill. So the punch drill, you, you'll, you'll typically punch out this way, and this will encourage your, your lead shoulder to get across you, but if you punch straight, you'll hit right into the wall too, too early. What I want you to do is I want you to punch up and across the wall, up here like this. So I'm not punching directly in, I'm punching up and across, 
almost like feeling like it's like a 45 degree angle. Okay, so that'll really get you to stretch out the rotation of the chest. It'll force that lead shoulder to kind of move more to the right of the ball. Okay, you can kind of see where my lead arm is now. So you want to punch and get it here. And then if you want, you can put your, 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 your right hand on it like this to give you a sense of how, how deep your hands are at the top with both hands on the grip, okay? So again, if you punch directly in, you'll, you'll, you won't be able to turn your shoulder. So remember, up and across the wall, and then you can regrip it just to get a feel. Okay, so it's a great uh, awareness drill to give you, again, more rotation and more extension. So the, when you punch up across the wall, again, that'll, that'll encourage you to actually extend the chest this way. If you punch too low and straight across, you can't, you can't get rotation or enough extension. So when you punch across, you can see my shoulders turn and also my chest kind of extending up this way at the same time. So let me know what you guys think. Thank you guys so much for watching. Now, if you uh, have any questions, you can leave a comment down below. Be sure to follow me on my Instagram at Jonathan K. Moss. And other than that, I will see you guys on the next video.